and welcome, welcome, welcome to another story time brought to you by ABC Read and ABC Learn, in which I am here to help you develop and nurture that love of reading in every child as well as every adult with our particular focus and interest on our black children and black families. That's what's up. I welcome you if this is your first time to our ABC Read, ABC Learn channel. Briefly, I will tell you what ABC Read is. ABC Read is our nonprofit organization, 501c3 organization. And again, we are developing and nurturing that love of reading in every child as well as every adult. All right, with our focus on our black children, black families, that is uh, what we usually say for our organization. And ABC Learn is my reading tutoring business. I am a reading tutor, pre-K through third grade. And I'm also... Uh, almost uh, finished, um, just waiting for the results from my final. I will be a certified tutor for children and adults who have dyslexia. All right. So um, I will be what is called Orton Gillingham certified. All right. They're supposed to, they're like the, the big wigs, the big to do when it comes to helping uh, children uh, with dyslexia. Okay. So with that being said, you are at the ch you are on the channel rather that are all things literacy. That is what we're about, promoting literacy, promoting reading and making sure that you all are uh, reading at least 30 minutes a day, making sure that you have books in your homes, promoting that literacy and instilling the, the, uh, the value of having literacy high on your value ladder, all right? We should have more books in our homes than we do televisions, okay? Then we do devices, all right? We got to be print rich. I talked about it before my last video. The school year is about to start, all right? And kids are going to be going back to school. And unfortunately, some kids are going to go back and the reading... Uh, gains that they achieved throughout the school year, some of them are going to go back and they're going to experience their reading loss. And that was because of that summer slide that I uh, have continuously talked about um, a lot. If you go back and look at our other videos, we just finished our Bye Bye Summer Slide reading program that we had at one of the local schools here in Cleveland because we want to be beat the summer slide. All right. But unfortunately, there are kids, and especially in the black community, who are experiencing that. And so what I am here to say is that one of the ways in which you can beat the summer slide and beat that reading loss is to make sure that you are reading in front of your children, making sure you are taking them to the libraries, making sure that you're coming on this channel so they can get read alouds in. All right. So also having your children sit down, get a book and having them copy a paragraph or two from a book daily. And these are things I wouldn't tell you to do things if I haven't tried it myself. And these are things that I do with my own kids. And I'm telling you, it works. Meet them where they are. Find out what books that they want. Find out the, their interests. And you get books on those topics so your kids can delve into reading. All right. This is what we got to do, y'all. We got to be on a mission, seriously. And I mean that straight from my heart. We got to literally every single day, we got to be really thinking about getting our kids into reading because see, we know that's the foundation of every subject. It, when our children master reading, then they will do well in math. My son earlier today, seven years old, I gave him some math problems and they were story problems. And I told him, I said, read the problem first. You have to read it first. And that's what a lot of our kids, when they start getting those upper grades, that's what they're going to have to start doing when they do science, social studies. You know, I don't care what subject it is. You're going to have to read. When you, when you go to catch, when you're trying to catch a bus, you got to read the schedule. You're going to a restaurant. You got to read the menu, right? So reading is everywhere. So that's why reading has to be the foundation. It has to be made important and we got to do lots of it, period. So now, with that being said, um, I am going to read to you, all right? And I'm still reading from this book, Stealing the Game by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Raymond Opsfeld. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, for those of you who don't know, you about to find out. This brother is a retired NBA player, 
He won plenty of NBA championships, got the rings to show for it, but he was about literacy though, all right? This brother said, no, I'm not about to sit up there and be just promoting bouncing a basketball and throwing basketballs in a hoop. I'm about to promote this right here, this old reading game up in here, all right? He was about them brains. Not to say that when you play a sport, you're not about the brains, so you know I, I'm, not def I'm definitely not saying that. But what I am saying is that we cannot, especially when it comes to our black boys, keep always trying to uh, shove a basketball or a football in their hands. What we need to do is shove a book in their hands. All right. So now I am about to read the next chapter in this book. This book right here is wow, man. I, I'm telling y'all, if y'all this y'all first time, please go back. Go back to chapter one of this book so you can find out what's going on between Jax and Chris. They're, these two are brothers and there's some serious stuff going on. All right. Their family is dealing with some issues right now. Jax has made some decisions that the family is not pleased with. His mom and dad are not pleased with. And um, we're about to delve into this story. All right. Saves the world. I was sketching a new supervillain when my bedroom door suddenly flew open. In a panic, I plunked my laptop on top of my sketches and began to type furiously. My heart beat as rapidly as my fingers clacked on the keyboard. Relax, Stan Lee, Jack said with a chuckle. I'm not here to bust you. I stopped typing and waited for my blood pressure to go down. Fear of discovery had left a weird taste in my mouth, like I'd been sucking on a rusty nail. Thanks for the heart attack, Jax, I said. Don't say I never gave you anything, SP, he said. Ditto, BB, I said. He closed the door behind him and leaned against it, releasing a deep sigh and pretending to wipe his brow. Woo, he grinned, and that was only round one. Can't wait to see what mommy and daddy dearest have in store for me tomorrow after they've had all night to discuss it. He made the sound of an explosion while his hands pantomimed an expanding mushroom cloud. You can't really blame them, I said sternly. I was inst instantly annoyed with myself for taking mom and dad's side. But I was mad at Jax for not telling me he dropped out of Stanford a place I had no hope of ever getting into or that he was coming back home. I get his not telling mom and dad, but I'm his brother. You did kind of spring this whole dropping out of law school thing on them. It's like a Band-Aid, bro. Just shake it off before you have time to think about it. Less painful that way. I stared at him, trying to figure out why he was acting so weird. He wasn't usually this sarcastic about mom and dad. He walked over to my desk and pulled the sketches out from under the laptop. Who's this? He said, holding up the supervillain I'd been working on. Remember earlier when I said I drew comics? I may have exaggerated my ability. My characters look stiff and mechanical, like they were drawn by a circus dog with a pencil in his mouth. Basically, I draw a vaguely humanoid shape. Then I design the costume and describe the powers with arrows pointing to appropriate body parts. Thinking of powers is what I'm good at. I'm hoping that someday I'll meet a real artist who might want to work with me. At school, I'm always secretly looking at kids' doodles, trying to find someone who can actually draw. Where's Master Thief? He said referring to my main superhero. Master Thief is the me I was telling you about earlier. The sophisticated thief who can go wherever he wants because he can break into anything. No secrets are safe from him and he can't be contained. You can lock him in a steel box and drop it into the ocean and he'd find a way out. I'm still not sure what superpowers to give him I could give him super hearing so he can hear the tumblers and safes that he's cracking. Or supervision so he can see all the traps that are laid out to capture him.
but I don't want to make it too easy for him. There has to be risk or the story will be boring. It's like Superman, right? He's got dozens of superpowers, so it's hard to believe anyone in the universe can defeat him. These are the villains Master Thief has to fight. I figure if I get them right, then I'll know what powers Master Thief needs. If he's a thief, why would he fight villains? Isn't he a villain? Well, he's a villain to some, just like Catwoman and Black Canary are. But he also fights against really bad guys. Sounds like an identity crisis. He's complicated, I said sharply, hoping to end the conversation. Truth was, I hadn't really figured it all out yet. He nodded as he leafed through my sketches. He held up the sketch of a man with six arms, each one holding a different weapon. Who's this? I call him Armed and Dangerous. Jax laughed. <laughs> That's funny, Chris. Really funny. Did you mean it to be funny? I shrugged. I had meant it to be funny, but for some reason, I didn't want to admit it. He mussed up my hair. You're a funny guy. Who knew? No one had ever called me funny before. Sometimes when kids were joking around at lunch or in the locker room, I would think of something funny to say, but I never actually said it. I think because by now everyone expected me to be the strong and silent jock. If I suddenly started joking around and acting all goofy, they might lose respect for me. Sometimes I wasn't sure which was worse, losing their respect or keeping it and not being able to do things I wanted to do. I thought you were going to change Master Thief's name, Jack said, sitting on the edge of my bed. Yeah, I am. I just can't think of what it should be. I like Master Thief. I shook my head. Too normal. Doesn't suggest any kind of powers. I can't name him until I figure out what his powers are. What about Ultra Thief or Super Taker? Oh, I've got it. That's mine. I laughed. That's mine. Okay, man, you're the artist. I don't want to interfere with creative genius. He flopped back on my bed and let out a long sigh. Man, I'm beat. Getting yelled at is exhausting. Nice to know dad hasn't lost any volume in his old age. I didn't say anything. Something didn't feel right about this whole situation. Not about him dropping out or coming home or that guy he was in the park who was in the park with who threw his icy on him. What really happened, Jax? What do you mean? Why'd you drop out of law school? I told you, Chris, I didn't drop out. I just took a leave of absence. That's a real thing. I've got official paperwork to prove it. I made a face. You've never failed at anything before. Not even close. I can't believe this was too hard for you. He closed his eyes and crossed his hands over his chest so that he looked like a corpse. Here lies the body of Jackson Peter Richards. He finally failed at something and it killed him. Stop acting like a jerk, I said, feeling the anger boiling up in me. I'm not mom or dad. He opened his eyes and sat up. He looked at me for a minute, then smiled sadly. It's not easy being the golden boy, Chris. Everybody expects you to win. Always. He shook his head as if trying to shake the memory out of his mind. This time, I didn't win. I don't know why. The courses were hard, but not that hard. The students were competitive, but basically nice. The teachers were helpful. I wasn't distracted with sports or girls or drugs or 
any of the usual excuses. And yet, he shrugged. And yet, I didn't seem to care. There's got to be a reason why, I insisted. There's a reason for everything. You sound like mom and dad. That doesn't mean I'm wrong. He laughed. <laughs> There's no mystery to solve, Chris. Big brother screwed up, and now I'm going to crash at home for a couple of months while I figure things out. If I were you, I'd quit worrying about me and start preparing for yourself. Prepare myself for what? Now that I'm the bad son, you've been promoted to the good son, which means mom and dad will be pushing you even harder. I knew he was probably right, which meant my only hope was to return him to the status of the good son, the golden boy. You going back to Stanford? I asked hopefully. He shrugged again. It's an option among others. What other options? What else can you do if you don't finish law school? Butcher, baker, candlestick maker. He flexed his huge bicep. Enforcer for the mob. I'm serious, dude. He nudged my leg with his foot and sang in a Jamaican accent. Don't worry. Be happy. I knew he was just trying to end the conversation. I'm not the same kid I was when you left for law school, Jax. You can tell me things. Jax's face turned serious and sad. I know, bro. I know. It's just that there's really nothing to tell. No sob story. No excuse. I just failed. I knew he was lying. Always knew with him. Not that he couldn't tell whopping lies and get people to believe him. If I overheard him lying to someone else, I'd believe him too. But he could never lie directly to me without me knowing. That didn't stop him from trying though. Who was that guy in the park? The one who threw the icy on you? Just a guy I know. No one important. He looked away, avoiding my eyes. I decided not to push him. He wasn't going to tell me anyway. Not yet. But there definitely was something mysterious going on with him. And I was going to find out what it was. But I would need help. And I knew just where to find it. Whoa, 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 y'all. This is the book. This is the book. Still in the gang. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Raymond Oxfeld. Isn't it getting juicy and juicier by the minute? I mean, this book is like, wow. It is a, tur a page turner. Big time, all right? So I hope you all tune in for the next chapter because it's gonna go into three days earlier, all right? So we're gonna find out what happened before all of this commotion, all right? So I hope you all tune back in. And please, please, please remember to keep reading for at least 30 minutes a day. Make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to this video, and make sure you share this video, all right? And remember to please keep reading. I'm going to say it again. I know I just said it about a couple sentences ago, but I'm going to say it again. Please keep reading for at least 30 minutes a day, y'all. All right, y'all. Peace.